welcome to Baseball Journeys, episode one. I'm your host, Robert Martin. This is a journey about Sean Martin from baseball beginnings to now. Sean, tell them a little bit about yourself. Uh, my name is Sean Martin. I am six four and a half, two hundred thirty pounds. Um, I'm th- I throw right-handed, bat left-handed. Um, in the process of trying to throw left-handed, um, that's starting to work out. Um, play everywhere except shortstop and second base. Um, um, I don't know what else. So when did baseball begin for you? What age were you? Mm-hmm. I think I was nine or ten. One of the two. No, I was ten because I went to twelve. Yeah, I went to twelve. Yeah, okay. Okay. Most kids start baseball when they're younger. You got to start when you were a little bit older. Uh, how was the learning curve playing for the first year for uh, the Pirates at Woodnell Park? Not at Woodnell Park, it was at Wilson Park. Wilson Park. Um, I saw a lot of kids were a little ahead of me. Ooh, punch buggy block right there. Um, uh, they were a little ahead of me. Um, it was a little harder to catch up, but once, but what it taught me is, is that a lot of the times when you're trying to achieve something, you have to put in more work than you want you know if you don't want to do anything you don't you don't want to work at this that the sport you know it's not worth your time found that out real quick because at first I didn't want I was slacking off and I wasn't doing well and you know when I saw kids doing better than me I had to push myself was one of the things that you enjoyed most about playing for the Pirates back then, what was the most important thing? What was the most fun you had? Most fun I had must have been the playoff game, the first playoff game we had against the Mets. Even though we lost, that was the most fun I've had on a baseball field ever. And it was because I, you realize so quick how important these guys are to you and how important it is to go out and perform and play well and have fun just on a baseball field. Okay, you've done that. Now, you transitioned from the Pirates. The next year you played for the Wilson Park Brewers. Uh, At the time, one of your good friends, James, is on it. His dad was the coach. What did you learn by playing on that season? (laughs) You can't slack off. (laughs) <laughs> you cannot slack off you can't I, I don't want to blow anything um, but you cannot do anything half as well as you should it's 100% every single time out and if you can do it 110% because if that 110% shows up other coaches will see it and other coaches will acknowledge it other coaches did acknowledge it, including the coaches you ended up going to the following season, and that was the Milwaukee Hitman. Now, we'll save that one for another episode, but one of the things that, what was the transition like from Wilson Park League Baseball to travel baseball? Travel baseball is a lot longer, a lot harder. Kids play a lot harder. They're a lot better than they were in Wilson Park, and it just seems that it's a lot more commitment. It's a lot more time you have to put in, a lot more effort you have to put in. You know, it's just not this leisurely, you know, rec league or something like that, which I'm not saying Wilson Park is, but it's just like it's not as toned down as Wilson Park was where you could just go out and have fun this is competitive you are out you have to play your hardest you're out there to win a tournament okay you've transitioned now from that team uh, to the last two years that you've managed to play with South Shore Blast 
uh, what, in your opinion, is the difference between what you did with the Hitman and what you did with the Blast? I had coaches that I could look, go up to and talk to. I only had one coach on the Hitman, which is Coach Eddie, that I could talk to. And now I have, I think, four coaches. Four coaches? Matt, Mark, um, Coach Tamiri, and uh, Coach, Coach Block. Block. Yeah, I have four coaches I can go up to with confidence. Okay, uh, just to let people know, uh, where are you going next year? Because now you are actually graduated eighth grade and you're going to high school. Uh, where are you going next year to high school? Reagan Ivy High School to the Huskies to play for Coach Brent or Scott, whoever you, whatever you want to call him. What was uh, one of the factors outside of education why you wanted to go to Reagan? I went to open gym in the fall and a little bit of winter of 2016. And when I went there and I just got to talk to the coach and talk to the players you know, see what these players say to do and not to do, you know, it's just, baseball is such a passion for me, and seeing how much those kids wanted to win, and how much they actually did win, you know, it pushed, it made me more and more persuasive to actually go to Reagan, because if... Like, if I were to go to, like, I don't know what school. Um, there were other options for you to go to school. Milwaukee King also has a good baseball team. And you moved to West Allis, and there's Nathan Hale here, too. Uh, what was it that made you want to stay at Reagan instead of going to one of those two other schools? They're coaching. Okay. If they're, if I love the coaching staff to death. The, those guys are just so nice. I love coaches that are willing anytime to, if you have a question, to answer it. Because it, I have a lot of questions when it comes to baseball. When I go in the dugout and say, you know, I think I might have done something wrong. Say it I, either if I maybe made a wrong call, maybe to for a cutoff guy at first base or something like that. Or... I go up to the coach and I'd ask and I'd just go and see what I could have done differently. Because I want to get better and if it means talking to the coaches, which I do anyway, I form great bonds with my coaches, it means that much more to me that I can talk to them. N not even just for baseball, just for like sometimes some personal stuff too, you know? Well. We wanted to get you an introduction into the series. This is going to be a process. We're going to go through a little more of his past. Obviously, we're going to be focusing more on the current and future. Uh, to wrap this up, appreciate you listening. And look forward to episode two coming soon. Peace.